So what we're trying to do is to, try to estimate the uncertainties associated with the direction. So this arises when we have a location such as 20 kilometers north of Nairobi. Okay, that's my example. So, let's put Nairobi on the map. I'll just make it like that. I don't know that that's the shape of Nairobi. There should be some scale on here. But that's Nairobi on the map. I don't know where in Nairobi is being referenced. Nairobi could be a point here, or here, or here, anywhere in the confines of the city. It could be my starting point. So that's where the extent of Nairobi comes into the uncertainties. Right? Because I could start anywhere in south. Now, if I'm going 20 kilometers north from just about anywhere in Nairobi, then what I'm doing is I'm taking this shape and I'm projecting it into the north, whatever the north means. Okay? So visualize a couple of different things. For the moment, I'm going to simplify. I'm going to only use the center of Nairobi and go 20 kilometers north to make my drawing. Okay? So the center of Nairobi is here. Now I'm going to go 20 kilometers north to here. So this is a point that is 20 kilometers north of the center of Nairobi. It's not exactly what this says. This doesn't say the center of Nairobi. It's in Nairobi. If I actually go 20 kilometers north from anywhere in Nairobi, I would end up with a copy of Nairobi up here, 20 kilometers north, that describes all of those places. But as I said, I'm simplifying because I want to show you just one part of the uncertainty here. Okay, so here's my point that's 20 kilometers north of Nairobi. <coughs> but I need to be conservative in my, my interpretation of this locality because I don't know if it means directly north. I don't know if the collector was cognizant of what it meant to be exactly north of Nairobi. So if I'm conservative in my interpretation, what I can say is that the collector knew the difference between northeast and northwest. So north is somewhere between those extremes. This being northeast, this being north, and this being northwest. Right? Because if the collector was outside of that range, over here they might have said west. Over here, they might have said east. If they did not, they said north. So it's somewhere in this cone. I'm being conservative, mind you, because I have no reason to trust the collector. I don't know who the collector was. I don't know how careful they were. Right? So given the information I was provided, I am going to include the possibility of the north and anywhere in this whole park. So that's the contribution uh, imprecision in direction measurements. It's on that list up there. Okay. Now, I'll use the same diagram to explain what happens if the, di if the collector had said northeast instead of north. Suppose it said 20 kilometers northeast from Nairobi. Okay, so now my point would be right there. But my direction uncertainty is slightly different. Why is that? Well, the collector said northeast. Now I know that the collector is able to distinguish northeast from north. I didn't know that if they only said north. But here's the evidence. 
northeast, collector notes of northeast means. So it's somewhere between, it's not north and it's not east. It's somewhere in between. So in this case, I know that the collector can distinguish between northeast and north, as well as northeast and east. So the uncertainty becomes a smaller cone, twice as small as the original cone between there and there, just because it was specified a little bit more specifically. Okay? So it's constrained in uncertainty due to the direction. When the calculator or geolocator or biogeomancer does its calculations, it takes that into account. And it does the interpretation. When you use the calculator, you'll put in the direction, and the calculator will figure out what that uncertainty calculation is. Okay, so I'll use the same diagram to describe the final contribution of uncertainty. I'll simplify by getting rid of some of this stuff. uncertainties comes from uncertainty in that distance unit. This doesn't say 20.000000 kilometers. It says 20. So I don't know how specific the collector was. So I create some rules without interpreting that. If the collector said 20.0, I would say, okay, collector knows the difference between 20.1 and 20.2, and so the uncertainty in that distance is 0.1 kilometers, if the digits justify it. But here I don't have that justification. I only have 20. So, how specific was the collector? All I know is that the collector is specific to a tens digit. Now, if that's at 21, I know that the collector is specific at least to one kilometer. Here, I don't know that. And because I'm being as conservative as possible, not trust the collector, then in this case, what I'm going to do is say, the collector knows the difference between 10 and 30. You know, at the same unit, uh, the same power of 10. If the collector had been 14 kilometers away from Nairobi, he would not have written 20, he would have written 10. Because it's closer. Or if it had been 26 kilometers away from Nairobi, he would have written 30 rather than 20. So that's, I can make those assumptions fairly safely. So what I'm going to do here is say that the collector is, has an uncertainty that is 10 kilometers. Because this digit is ambiguous. What that means then is that on this map, the collector was somewhere between there and there, where this is 10 kilometers across and 20 is in the middle. In other words, anywhere between 15 kilometers and 25 kilometers. Because if it was outside of those, a different number would have been written. So on the map, what that's saying is that Nairobi, 20 kilometers north, is somewhere in this band. That's the contribution from the distance of the city. Okay. And that's the full spectrum of all the sources of uncertainty that we need to deal with. Now, what I haven't shown you and what the georeferencing guidelines theoretical document shows you how all of this stuff fits together. Because now, not only do I have this distance imprecision, but I also have the direction imprecision, 
and also have the extended precision, and I also have all these different sources are going to add together, and it turns out that they don't always add together by summing them. Because we have geometry involved here, sometimes it's quite nasty. And trigonometric, trigonometrical. To give you an idea then of what the uncertainty for this whole simple description of the place is, I need to draw some things. So the uncertainty due to the distance actually makes an arc that's always between 15 kilometers and 25 kilometers away from Nairobi up to 25 kilometers away from Nairobi. So now I have this arc. That's the distance uncertainty only going north, somewhere north of Nairobi. It's in there. We haven't even added in here that Nairobi has a site. That was just from the center of Nairobi. So what we'd have to do is take this picture of Nairobi and put it everywhere that it could possibly be there in order to get that shape. What that, that would do is give you a bigger band. It goes further out here, it has the shape of Nairobi on this side. It goes further out there, it has the shape of Nairobi on that side. And further in those two directions as well. So, again. Medical or the good news is the georeferencing calculator knows how to do that. And it puts all of the uncertainties together. So all of this just to give you an appreciation for the fact that what looks like a really simple description of a place has all kinds of horrible uncertainties associated with it. This leads to one interesting conclusion that's useful for research on your own. And that is, if you want to create a description of the place, this looks good, right? This looks quite simple, straightforward, very clear. But look how much interpretation can go into it. If you want to write a description that has very little uncertainty, that can be georeferenced without all this big uncertainty, then you need to reduce every one of those sources of uncertainty. How can you do that? Well, you could rewrite this description. You could be specific about the distance. You could say that it was 20.1 kilometers north of the Nairobi. That gets rid of this huge band. That's helpful. You could say that it was due north of Nairobi, that you actually used a line straight north. And that gets rid of this whole band here. So now we've got this tiny little location there. You could say north of the center of Nairobi, geographical center of Nairobi, or some location within Nairobi, something small, something that's much smaller than Nairobi itself, and that reduces all of this uncertainty. So, the bottom line is that the best location descriptions use a very specific starting place, not a very vague one, such as an intersection. They use distances that are very specific and that you can tell are specific down to the nearest uh, portion of your distance unit if possible. And then they say explicitly what the direction is. Any questions about all of that? I know that I've compressed a whole bunch of uh, geographies and theory into one example. Overall, what I really wanted to give you is the idea of how complicated it can be. If we want to be conservative about the implementation, and if we want to represent our uncertainties um, faithfully. Just a quick mention that if you were to stay on for next week's course, one of the big next steps in ecological niche modeling, which is one of the major uses to which these data are put. One of the big questions is how to incorporate localities of different levels of precision. Okay, it turns out it has a huge effect that essentially none of the practitioners are taking into account. And a lot of the reason is the data of this sort 
are not terribly rich outside of Berkeley. Is that a reasonable statement, then? Yeah, they're very hard to find. Part of the reason that they're difficult to find is that obviously it takes some work to get your evidence and you include all that information. So I think that I've explained on the board what is in this presentation in much more detail. I'll skip this because I've already shown you where these documents are available on your flash drives. This is just the list of uncertainties again. And then I have in this uh, presentation the more specific or individual sources of uncertainty called out and explained in fact that it's a quick review. The idea here is that there's uncertainty because of the size of the place. There's uncertainty in GPS because we don't know how accurate the GPS. This is a natural photo showing the position where the human was with the GPS when the GPS reading was taken. It is known because that was his house. He was standing there. So that is the location as it appears mapped on Google Maps in the satellite view. The GPS coordinate told him that he was right here, some meters away in his living room as opposed to his kitchen, let's say. So not too bad. The cell phone, at the same time, said that he was over here. Okay. So you can see that there were contributions that wasn't actually in the exact same place. The unknown data were described. This is a graphic showing how these distance measurements can come into play. This one is for two dimensions. A description where, it's, where the location said some distance east and some distance north. That's a special case for the locality. We call it an offset in the orthogonal directions. And we'll see an example of that in the calculator. This is a, a table showing how uncertain a latitude and longitude can be if we know the precision of that location to these different levels of coordinate precision. So one of the questions I have been given at times is, what's the best format to use on my GPS if I want to be most accurate? And it depends somewhat on your GPS. But if your GPS is able to use the three different coordinate systems that are uh, shown on here, that is decimal degrees, or degrees with decimal minutes, or degrees, minutes, and seconds, then what you do is you find out which of these on this graph has the smallest uncertainty. Well, the smallest uncertainty is those that have degrees, minutes, and seconds to one hundredths of a second. GPS is don't do that. GPS is not that accurate. GPS is the best of them, show you either one second or 0.1 seconds. In general, if it was just one second, you can see that the uncertainty is in the neighborhood of 40 meters, depending on the latitude. Whereas, GPS is that if you use decimal minutes, that was three decimal places on minutes. You can actually get down to very, very little uncertainty in the GPS reading. The normal reading on a GPS uses decimal degrees to five digits. And that's this reading, also very good. So you're better off using a GPS probably in decimal degrees if it shows this many decimals, or in decimal minutes if it shows this many. 